In this video, I want to introduce you to sketching the modulus of linear functions. Okay? Now, when I want you to be doing this, I want you to be thinking about completing the square. Now, the reason why I say that is not so obvious. Okay? However, what you need to think about is that when you are completing the square, the reason why you write a quadratic incomplete square form is to identify the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola. So, if I was asking you to sketch y is equal to 2 lots of x minus 3 squared plus 4, then you should be able to tell me that the coordinates of the vertex is at 3, 4. OK, so there's the vertex, just directly from it being completed square form. And then we'd be able to work out where it crosses the uh, y-axis by putting x is 0. So you've got 2 lots of minus 3 squared, so that's 2 lots of 9, so 18, plus the 4, so 22. OK, and so this would be a sketch of the quadratic. Now, how does that link in with modulus graphs? Well, modulus graphs, y equals mod x, has this distinctive v-shape, OK? And it has a vertex, just like the parabola does. Although the parabola has a what we would refer to as a turning point or a stationary point, and this point isn't a turning point or a stationary point, we could still identify it as a vertex, OK, as that point that we are considering. So the shapes that we're dealing with here have a similar property. They have a vertex. They also have symmetry. So parabolas have a line of symmetry, as do modulus graphs. Okay? So there's actually a lot of similarities between modulus graphs and parabolas. Now, when I'm talking about this here, this modulus of x minus 3, well, that is allowing me to identify the vertex immediately. In exactly the same way as if I was dealing with y is equal to x minus 3 squared, I'd be able to say that the vertex is at 3, 0. Because 3, x equals 3, will make this bracket 0. OK, so I know that 3, 0 is a point on the graph. And the lowest that this can be, the smallest this can be, is 0. So I know that 3, 0 is actually the vertex of the parabola. Likewise, when x is 3 in here, you get 3 take away 3, which is 0, mod of 0 is 0. And so 3, 0 is also a point on this graph. And 0 is the smallest that this can be. Otherwise, it's larger than 0. It's positive. So this connection between the parabola and the modulus graph is made even more clear if you can just then read off the coordinates of the vertex. So for number 1 here, the vertex is at 3, 0, in, in exactly the same way you would identify the vertex of a parabola in completed square form. So here is the v-shape. Okay. And what's left is to work out where it crosses the y-axis, which is going to be when x is 0. So when x is 0, you get the modulus of negative 3, which is 3, which makes sense. This has gradient minus 1. This has gradient 1. And they are the two pieces of your graph. So let's see what happens when we look at example number 2. So y is equal to the modulus of x take away 3, take away 3. Now, if this was completed square form, we'd be thinking, well, the vertex will be at 3, negative 3. And this is precisely right for the modulus graph as well. Because when x is 3, this modulus part is 0, which means that the y value must be greater than or equal to minus 3 for all values of x, all real values of x. So that makes sense that 3 minus 3 is the lowest part of the graph, and hence the vertex. So that is what we can draw. So 3, negative 3, is the vertex, the first thing that I can draw. When x is 0, 
I've got mod of minus 3, which is 3, take away 3, which is 0. So it's going through the origin. Like so. Now you might then be thinking, OK, well, where else does it cross the x-axis here? What's that point? Well, because of the symmetry of the graph, if that's 3 units, then that must also be 3 units. OK, so that must be 6. OK. And so that is my sketch of number 2. Right, now number 3. Um, now what you can do with things like this, with the y equals 2x plus 10 modded, is you are able to treat that modulus um, relatively like a bracket. You can pull uh, factors out. So it is perfectly fine for you to pull the 2 as a factor out of the modulus and have two lots of mod of x plus 5. So you can then bring the 2 back in, if required, to get the mod of 2x plus 10. OK? So if I had y equals 2x plus 5 squared, so this was a parabola that I was required to sketch, I'd be able to identify the vertex at minus 5, 0. OK, that 2 doesn't make any difference. So it's minus 5, and there's this plus 0 on the end that I'm kind of ignoring. So, minus 5, 0 would put me here. So this is what my uh, graph should look like. And when x is 0... I get the modulus of 10, which is 10. And so that would be the sketch of number 3. Now, number 4 requires a little bit more thinking. And it's useful at this stage to see how you can algebraically manipulate y equals mod 10 minus 2x into a slightly different form probably a more favourable form. So we've learnt from up here in number 3 that we can pull that 2 out. So we can factor 2 out of this. That's perfectly fine. And have 5 minus x. OK? Now, with that, you can, you can clearly see that when x is 5, y would be 0. OK? So we could use that. But it's also useful to see this process here. What you can do is you can factor minus 1 out of those two terms. So have negative minus 5 plus x, like so. So all I've done there is pull minus 1 out as a factor of these two terms, leaving with negative 5 plus x. Minus 1 times minus 5 makes the 5. Minus 1 times x makes the minus x. So these two lines are the same thing. Now you could rewrite this as x take away 5, just reordering those two terms. Now, because you're doing the modulus of what's inside here, and this is negative, the modulus makes uh, every value or the outputs positive, or greater than or equal to 0. So if you've got this x minus 5, and then you're making whatever that value is uh, the negative of that, then the modulus sign will undo the negative, and so cancelling the modulus out. So... It kind of eats away the negative symbol. And this is the same thing as that. Now, you might be wondering, well, why have I done this process? Why has this helped? Well, what's important to notice is that this line and this line are the same thing. So within the modulus, you can reverse the order of the terms, um, multiplying through everything by minus 1, for example. And that will... Uh, that's a perfectly valid move to make. So, let's jump into the sketch, because now we've got it in this format, it's just as easy as it was up here. So, the vertex here is at 5, 0. There's 5. There's my graph. And when x is 0, I get the modulus of 10, which is 10. And so this is how easy it can become 
to sketch the modulus of linear graphs once you've identified that there is this distinct connection between them and complete a square form. If you can read off the vertex from a quadratic in complete square form, you can do so just as easily with the modulus of a linear graph as well.